Welcome to our tutorial about the Stream Reader and Stream Writer. As in the previous two tutorials, we're going to obtain data from a text file and afterward write it to another file. In this tutorial, we'll do it using the Stream Reader and Stream Writer classes. Let's start with a Stream Reader. Stream Reader is a class in the .NET Framework Library. We're going to be talking more about the .NET Framework later in this course. Stream Reader allows you to open and display the contents of a text file. First, let's import namespace. Imports System Dot .io We just imported namespaces for system.io. Namespace is basically a hierarchical library of classes organized under a unique name. For example, system.windows, system.math, or system.io in our case. IO stands for input, output. This namespace contains classes which allow reading and writing from and to data streams and files. Let me also mention the difference between files and streams. A file is a collection of bytes in a particular sequence that has a permanent storage and name. A file also has a path, as you see here, c colon test.txt. A stream, on the other hand, provides a way to write and read bytes from and to the storage medium. Different types of streams exist, network streams, storage streams, memory streams, and so on. Now let's comment out the code we wrote in our previous tutorial. Let's type dim str as new stream reader. Here we'll use the path to the text file as the string argument. C colon backslash test dot txt and hard return. Our next line txt box dot text equals str period read to end the last line str dot close okay let's take a moment to review what's happened here first i declared the variable str as a stream reader object to hold the object of the text file test.txt. Next, I wrote the contents of the file into the string variable using the read to end method. I assigned it to the text property of txt box. In the last statement, I closed the stream reader object. Now let's run our program and see how it works. Click open. The text from test.txt displays in the text box. Back to our code. One more thing about the import statement. If we didn't include it, we'd have to type it here. System.io This is just to clarify how it works. Let me delete it from here. Now instead of using the read to end method, I'm going to show you how to use the read line method. This will let you retrieve the text from the text file line by line. Let's move str close to the bottom of our code block. We'll uncomment these two variables, declaration lines. And we're going to use the do until loop. Let's declare one more variable. dim last line 
as boolean equals false. And we'll use the last line variable in our do until loop. Here we'll replace the line input function with str dot read line using the read line method. Now we'll use an if else routine. If line is nothing, then hard return else hard return and here we'll type last line equals true these two lines will move inside the else statement let's check out how it works the do until loop will keep working until the last line. The variable will return the true value, which happens right here inside the if statement. When we get to a line that equals nothing, that doesn't contain anything, the last line equals true statement will be executed. Until that happens, we'll read the text from the file line by line using the read line function. Let's run our program and see how it works. First, second, third, and fourth. Okay, I obviously missed something. Let's see what it is. Let's uncomment this line. Now we'll run our program again. The first, second, third, and fourth. And as you see, the text has been placed in the text property of the text box. Now we're going to use the stream write function to bring the contents of the text box to the text file. Let's clean up our code a little bit first and scroll down here. Let's declare the variable STW as a new stream writer. And let's check for spelling mistakes. Now, STW period, right line. Open parenthesis. TXT box dot text. And the last line here, STW period, close. Finally, we need to specify the file that we'll be saving. We're going to call it test4.txt. Let's run our program. Open. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Maybe here we want to make some changes. We'll enter the last name. Some hard returns. And now we want to save it. Let's click Save to File. And let's go to our file to verify that our changes are there. Yes, our changes are intact. Success. And this concludes our tutorial on using the Stream Reader and Stream Writer classes.